welcome back everybody to another Python tutorial. In the last video, I showed you how to get started with beautiful soup and scraping data from the internet. Now this video is going to handle grabbing a large amount of data and to do it, we're gonna be using Google News and the same technique that we used in the previous video. And we're also gonna be writing this data to a CSV file and in a later episode, we're actually going to use that data that we collect to train an NLP model, which we can predict uh, sentiment analysis for, say, the articles and descriptions that we are gathering today. So let's get started. I already created a new virtual environment, and we're going to have to download some packages. Um, these are the exact packages that I downloaded in the last episode. So if you're using the same environment, you can skip this part. So we're going to do pip install requests. And then right after that, we're going to um, do pip install beautiful soup 4. So pip install bs4. All right. And then the last one is going to be url lib. Pip install url lib 3. Um, it says already satisfied, I think, because it was downloaded in one of these later packages. So let's create a new file and we will call it googlenews.py. And we're going to start by importing the same. So if you remember in the last tutorial, we just did URL lib um, dot request. And from that, we're going to import requests as well as URL open. And this is going to work for us so we could build out our headers. And then we're going to do from BS4 import beautiful soup and then last just import requests and you may say like well how are you going to write it to the csv file um, we don't actually need pandas or any other external program to do that and we might also need because i just realized uh, you need a parser library so let's do pip install html5 lib um, and that's just a library that we're, we might need when we're uh, using beautiful soup so let's begin by showing you where we're going to be scraping data from. So we're going to be scraping data from Google News. So let me type in Google since it's not my primary search engine. And let's type in a company name or just any random news article. And actually, let's say something that's a little more biased. So we'll say like Trump um, just because he has a lot of news about him. Um, and a lot of it is either on the on supporting him or against him. So I feel like this would be really dramatic data that we can use um, to train our, our model on. So from here, um, you could see in the link itself, it has a few data points that we can um, break out into Word. So you could see that right here, um, it says Q equals Trump. Um, let me see if I could fit it all on one line. So yeah, right here you can see Q equals Trump. So that's actually taking in the variable that we're giving it in Google. So say if we were to tr um, you know, change this to say Q equals Biden. Um, now you could see we're getting a bunch of information about Biden. Um, so that's one way that we could control what we're searching for using just the link and manipulating the query on it. And also you can see that if we change the parameters on here, such as, um, you know, one where we want it from, say we want to collect data only from the past 24 hours. Um, you can say, you know, past 24 hours, sort by date, or just keep it at relevance. And it will pull up here and you'll see that the link has changed as a result. So actually, let's use that since uh, we can limit the amounts of data. We'll only go through about 10, maybe more pages, um, and we won't go anything past that. However, you th could theoretically go through every single page um, until Google you know, stops giving you data. So let's start now by creating a new object, and we're going to call it, actually, we're going to call it root, and root will be equal to just google.com. And we want that because this will never change. So we will always be using google.com as kind of the host and we're just changing the search query and um, you know pulling different items from it. So then 
as the link now, let's put in this right here. Actually, let's change the query back to Trump. So if we copy it now, and we'll go into PyCharm, we paste it as a new variable called link, and now we're going to um, create a new variable like we did last time called rec, and we're going to have it be equal to request link, and we're going to pass it headers, and the headers are going to be user-agent, and that's going to be equal to Mozilla um, slash 5.0. And then here, we're going to just do web page equals URL open. And we're going to pass in that rec. So after we apply the headers and the link to it. And now we're going to just want to do dot read. So actually, if we just print it out real quick, um, I moved my terminal to the side. Uh, we have to do just print web page. So printed out the HTML now. And like we saw in the last video, it's a really messy format in that way. So to fix that and uh, to make it, you know, a little more readable, we can use beautiful soup. So we're going to do with requests dot session as C. And we're just going to say soup equals beautiful soup. And we're going to pass in web page and also that HTML5 lib, which is our parser library. Oops, I forgot to print it out again, so I'll just do print soup. And now you can see that it you know, makes it a little easier to read. It breaks it up into smaller chunks. I think if I had my terminal set up in a different way, it'd be a lot more readable. However, I like having it on the side. So now, since we have all of this information right here in the HTML, we can actually begin to select some of our elements um, from this web page on Google. So to do that, I'm going to be opening up inspect element and I'm going to hover over the region that we want to select. So right off the bat, I can see that we want to select this class right here. And we're choosing that one because each card, which um, contains like the image, the title, um, when it was published, each card has their own um, class and it's all equal to the same one. So we're going to kind of do a for loop for every class on this page um, that's containing, you know, DBSR. So we can do that now by opening up PyCharm again, and we're gonna say for item in soup, in soup dot find underscore all, and we're gonna put div because it's a div tag. And we're also gonna wanna do attributes is equal to class, and that is DBSR, I'm pretty sure. Yep. So if we were to print out this um, item now, so print out every item, forgot my colon. Um, so if we were to print out every item of this, we'll see the HTML for every tag that has that class. So it's not printing out for me. And I think that issue might be because it's not able to grab this class and there might be an error. So if we try to print out soup now, we can actually search in this HTML if there is a class element that's equal to DBSR. So if we do DBSR, you can see that it's not finding anything uh, when we do control F. So that means we're gonna have to select a new element and make sure it's in the following HTML. So a better way to do it would be if we're looking through the HTML, you could see that there's links um, for the different articles. So we might wanna capture a tag that holds all of that information. So since it's not printing out to any of the classes that we're giving it, let's instead try pulling one directly from the HTML. So we can say, you know, KCRYT. And the benefit of this is you can already see that it's in the HTML. So that means that it should print out and you can see it happened right here. So actually, if we look at it now, we can see we're getting the different links for each source. And also, it seems like we are getting the title and description. 
So I'm going to leave off right here for this video and in part two, we'll be going over how to parse this data and then write it to our CSV file. So stay tuned for that and that will be dropping in a day after the release of this video.